welcome along to this yoga flow. I hope that it leaves you with a sense of well-being and that you feel really energized after it. So take a few minutes to find a comfortable seat of your choice. <clears throat> if this is uncomfortable and it's really tight in your hips, you can also sit on your shins. So have a little look, relax your shoulders, close down your eyes just for a couple of breaths and allow yourself to become really present before you start to move. So it's a mindful movement. As you breathe in, start to visualize your breath, moving a little bit deeper now down towards the belly, but do this gradually. And when you exhale, visualize your lungs being completely empty. Two more breaths. Final one. Now take the palms of the hands together at the centre of the chest. Allow your chin to rest in towards the chest and set an intention for this yoga practice. in through your nose, part your lips and release the intention for now. Blink open your eyes and welcome yourself into your yoga practice. Take your time and find your way to all fours. Make sure your hands are directly underneath your shoulders and your knees are directly underneath your hips. Take a deep breath in, drop your belly down, strong arms, heart radiates forward. Exhale, round your spine, chin in towards chest. Allow yourself to flex and bend with each inhalation and with each exhale that you take. Have a soft eye gaze or maybe even close down your eyes for a couple of repetitions. Coming back to centre, draw the navel in. Take your left hand please and your right leg and send them along. So going for length, draw the navel in so you don't let the lower back arch. Watch for the hip, either wants them to collapse or spiral open. So toes are down, strong arm, strong back leg. Softly change sides. Allow the limbs to lift and to tap down at the same time. Taking your time so that you can feel into the posture the shape that you're making, being aware of what's happening as you move. Last one. And then I want you to curl your toes under by taking the hands a little bit further along the mat. Take your force down or facing down with the practice. Take your time as you lift your sit bones right up towards the ceiling. Pedal into your heels. Bend the knees as much as you need to. <clears throat> Take your eye gaze up towards your navel. And then I want you to find some stillness. So coming off the tippy toes, anchoring down into the heels. And just breathe in and out of your body. Softly start to grip the mat with your fingertips, pull your shoulders back and down your spine, and just allow yourself to be in or the Mukha Shavasana, your downward facing dog. Eye gaze goes forward, taking a deep knee bend, left foot lands in between the hands. Pushing into the back heel, take a deep breath in and extend your arms up and overhead. Lengthen through the back leg, practice your arms now, elbows lead, heart radiates again forward. Arms come up. One more, soft back bend, strong back leg, hands on hips. Now I want you 
need to bend through the back knee, allow the back knee to tap. Three more times, take your time. Two more. Final one, keep the length throughout the hip flexor here. Hold, arms sweep up overhead and open into rear Vajrasana 2, warrior 2. So a deep knee bend and a strong back leg. Open through the hips, arms up. Now generally we tend to focus a lot of our energy on the front arm and the back arm tends to release. We want to make sure that each arm are strong and straight. Cartwheel your hands down to frame that left foot. Come onto the ball of the foot, stepping back to downward facing dog. Bend your knees deeply and power your right foot in between the hands. If it cuts short, put your hand around the ankle and guide it to the position. Rise up, strong back leg, deep knee bend to the front. Cactus in the arms, elbows down, heart forward. Think about squeezing the back muscles. One more. Find that neutral position. Hands to hips. Tap the back knee towards the mat for four. For three. Two more. This knee tracks in one line. Holding up. Open to Veer Vajrasana 2. Take your time. Checking the alignment from the back body. That the front knee isn't collapsing in. So open the knee, strong back leg, eye gaze forward, breathe in and settle. Now the back leg, the knee may want to collapse in, just root into your heel and the little toe a little bit more. Cartwheel your hands down to frame that front foot, ball the foot, the back leg, step back down, replacing dog. Glide into a high plank please, your option will be to be on your knees. Squeeze your bone, crown the head forward, coming up onto the tippy toes and elbows in ever so slowly. Upward facing dog. Squeeze your bone, heel strong into the midline. Lift up through the crown of the head and breathe. Curl the toes under, back to downward facing dog. Now if at any point you need to take a breath, I want you to come with me and glide into child's pose, so knees wide. Big toes touch, head down. This is an optional recovery and anytime you want it, please take it, listen to your body. Hands back underneath your shoulders, coming back into box position. Take the navel and draw it in. Pressing into the bridge of your feet, rooting down into your toes, elbows pinch in, lifting into Torgo tabletop. Eye gaze forward to the mat and breathe. Your option is to release down and to come back up. If you can hold up, do so. From here, curl the toes under, lift back into downward facing dog, realign your hands if it's needed. Bend your knees, eye gaze forward, left foot in between hand. And then ground the back heel down, cartwheel back to warrior two. Straighten the front leg. Eye gaze forward. Take a breath in. Trikonasana. Reach forward and open up. Eye gaze up, ever down. Watch where the body wants you to collapse forward. Top arm sweeps back. You're twisting from the navel. Heart is radiating up towards the ceiling. Your option is to bend. You can grip or you can come all the way down. Whatever option you choose. Make sure that you're really mindful of the alignment that you're holding throughout your body. Bending into that knee, back to warrior two. And then externally rotate your feet and sit back, sit down, goddess posture. Hands can be on the legs. You can back off when you need to. Sit back down, reach on up and settle in. Think about drawing your heels in towards the midline so you're not just collapsing downwards. So we're drawn in slightly. You feel the muscles start to engage. <coughs> Open out now to your right side to warrior two to begin. 
Strike mid, coming into Trikonasana, triangle, triangle pose. Cartwheel your arms down, eye gaze up, outer down. Whatever variation you chose in your left, I recommend you do on your right. Coming back to warrior two and back to goddess. Sit back, sit down. Breathe in and out. Soften the eye gaze. You can drop the eye gaze down towards the floor. Steady mind, steady body. Wrap your arms like ropes. Left over right. Elbows drawing down and then draw them up and away from the body. Allow yourself to take a breath in and crease forward now from the waist. Bring the toes forward, heels out, and hold halfway. Breathe in. Chin draws in towards chest. Back to goddess, unravel the arms. Exterior, take the toes, sit back, sit down. Right over left, wrap like ropes. Pulling them down, force then up and away from the body. Straight, strong legs, heels out, toes in. Flexing forward from the waist, breathe. Allow your hands to find the mat. If you need to bend your knees very deeply to do that, please do so. Allow the crown of the head to become heavy and to draw down towards the mat, elbows pinching in. Breathe in and out. As you draw in the elbows, allow them to bend back. Open the palms of the hands, energize your hands. Remembering that we're trying to really shift and energize the body. So shifting any old stagnated energy, welcome in high vibrational energy. Take a seat. So coming into a goddess variation, take the elbows up onto the knees and very gently start to heel toe the feet in ever so slightly. And then we're setting up for a Hindu squat. So you're going to sit your bum back and down and breathe in and out through the hips. If this is too intense, just back off. Listen to the body. Push your heart forward and I want you to take your elbows and I want you to press into the knees. At the same time, simultaneously push your knees into the midline and bring the chest forward. Keep breathing. That's the main thing. Don't hold your breath as you practice. Take the hands down to the mat, allow the crown of the head to come down, back side goes up into the air. Gently step or hop the feet back out wide. Hands to hips, take a breath in, hinging back up, open to the left side into Trikonasana. So push the hips, long arms and open. You might feel that you have more space now on this one. So this is your second round of Trikonasana. Softly draw yourself back up to the midline. And adjust yourself so that you can open up onto the right side now. So extend right up from the hips to the crown of the head. And then cartwheel down. Coming back to that wide-legged forward fold, softening the knees, opening up, hands to hips, heels, external rotate, toes come in, wide-legged forward fold, stopping halfway. Right hand to the midline, crown the head becomes heavy and drops down. Left hand goes all the way up towards the ceiling. Now let the head become heavy. It's a soft twist through the neck. Top shoulder pulls back and down the spine. Chin ever so slightly drawn inward. Exchange your hands, left replaces right. Right goes all the way up towards the ceiling. Making sure you're twisting from the ribs and into the spine, not just from the neck. Hands come down. Lift yourself up onto your tippy toes. Walk all the way to the left. Stepping back into downward facing dog. Option there is a child's pose if you need to pull back. Take a breath in and glide into high plank. Option knees down. 
push back into the heels, crown the head forward, Chaturanga all the way down, hold, 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 don't move. <laughs> Lifting up into upward facing dog, squeeze your bum, heels in. Strong arms. Back to downward facing dog. Take the left leg please, send it right towards the sky and bring your left knee to your left elbow. Then take the knee to the right, back to left, to right, and then back to three-legged downward facing dog. Replace the foot, right side, lifting up, and then go for a length, really root into your hands. Take the right knee to the right elbow. Good, and then keep the heel up towards the butt. Left, right, left, right, kick back. Breathing in, breathing out, holding the downward facing dog. Eye gaze forward, deep knee bend, step, hop, jump, get to the top of the mat, land light, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, close down. Curl up through the back. Take a few moments to find some stillness and just to reflect on your practice. Hands to heart. Feel your heart beat. Feel the heat in your body. Take a deep breath in, circle all the way up overhead. Exhale, hinge forward from the waist. Stepping back with the right foot, eye gaze goes forward. Strong back leg. Taking a nice couple of deep breaths in. <clears throat> and then exhale. So just settle here. Taking a couple of breaths in. Now exhale, step back into downward facing dog. Glide forward into that high plank. Place the left hand into the midline. Exhale, open to me. Reach up. Create like a banana shape with your body. Eye gaze forward, up or down. Keep breathing. If this is too intense, just ground the back knee down. Sorry, the underneath knee down, that's your left. <clears throat> Pull a little bit more, float the leg up into the air. Coming back into plank, so full plank. You're gonna exchange, right hand goes to left. Flip open, and when you get here, lift up through the hips. Eye gaze up, elbow down. Remembering the option is always there. Back into plank and then back into downward facing dog. Bring the shins and the knees in. Take a seat. Allow yourself to settle onto the mat for a breath or two. Swing the legs forward of the mat. Find a comfortable seat by taking the big muscles of the back side and shifting them out of the way. Coming into Dandasana, also known as staff or stick pose. So find length in the legs, elongate your spine and draw your chin in. So even though we have muscle awareness, it's not rigid. <clears throat> Toes draw back towards you, heels root down. Open up through the collarbones, shoulders descend. Breathe in, breathe out, right into your heart center. You're doing an amazing job, you're so close. You're gonna take the left foot, draw it up and over. Your option is to keep that leg long or hook it under, coming into a spinal twist. Right hand wraps around left, breathe in and lift. Exhale, take the eye gaze back behind. As you breathe out, allow the body to unravel. Allow the legs to go along. Finding yourself back in Dandasana staff or stick pose. Feeling the difference between your right and your left side. Acknowledging what your practice is doing to your mind, to your body.
Taking the right foot up and over, option it again is to keep the leg long or else to tuck it under, you choose. Left wraps around right, breathe in, lift, eye gaze goes back. You're hugging and actively drawing that knee in, so that the arm's not just resting around. You're rooting down into your sit bones and you're lifting up through the crown of the head. As you breathe out, once again allow the body to unravel, allow yourself just to come cross-legged, find some space throughout the back, throughout the shoulders. Now just some organic movement, so you're literally just going to sway from the waist up through the mid-back, up through the shoulders. Allow the neck to become involved and then find that middle ground or whatever is neutral in your body because we're all so different also unique. Take your focus to your breath. Allow yourself to sit in that heat that you just generated with all that movement. Maybe close in your eyes. Allow your arms and your legs to become nice and heavy. And if time permits, I welcome you now to lay down into Shavasana. Allow your body this time, this space. It's one of the most important parts of your yoga practice, in my opinion. I recommend a minimum of 10 minutes. Just allow the mat to fully and completely support your body. Allow everything to melt down. Let your to-do list go for now. And enjoy. Namaste.